So if you come here hoping for a review of a new gaming case, you're going to be disappointed because Silverstone specifically states in the review guide of the Cita Q1 that this is a workstation and professional case. But is there really any difference between a gaming case and a case for workstation PCs? Well, if you stick around, we're going to find out. So the Seta Q1 from Silverstone, it's a new mid-tower ATX case. As I've said, it's not a gaming case, so there's no RGB lighting, no tempered glass anywhere to be seen. This is designed or aimed at professional users, workstation PCs, content creation. In terms of MSRP, Silverstone tells us that this will be £190 in the UK. However, if you look online at the moment, you can see at CTL, you can pick this up at £150. So, a little bit of confusion there. We're not sure what's going on with the pricing. This has got a real austere look to this case. It's a very plain and simple front panel design. There's no mesh or no ventilation at the front of the case for direct airflow. However, unlike a lot of other low noise or silent operation cases, Silverstone has gone the extra mile in the development of this case, especially this front panel. So during the development, Silverstone's tested multiple different fans and also different versions of these vents that you can see down the side of the front panel. They settled on the design that we've got now. So this is a 60 degree slope and they're also angled inwards, these vents. And apparently, according to Silverstone's testing, that is the optimal for airflow and for CPU temperature. So let's take a look at the case and see exactly what Silverstone has done. So obviously from the outside, there isn't a lot to say about the case other than it's a closed front panel. There's some vents down the side for airflow. On the top of the case as well, front IO is at the top towards the front. So on here, you've got a power button, a reset button, two USB 3.0 type A ports and a USB type C port, and then just a single 3.5 millimeter audio jack. So if we remove this front panel, we can get a better look at what's actually going on. So just pull it from the bottom and the front panel does come off. There's quite a lot going on in here. It's not just a solid front with some soundproofing material inside. You can see there's some intricate work inside the front panel. So first of all, there's this central vent and that's covered by a dust filter and that just pops out quite easily. And then you can see behind that, there is some EVA sound dampening material in there as well, but I'm more interested to see what is actually underneath this plastic. So I'm just gonna remove all these screws and take a look. So that's all the screws removed. So now we can pull this middle section out. And if I put both these side by side, you can see on both the uh, inner and the outer parts as well, there's this EVA soundproofing material on both front panels as well. There's these sections here that will create bends through the airflow channels. I think what Silverstone is trying to do with this is almost create a baffle for noise. So be interesting to see later during testing how effective that is. It's quite useful that this can be disassembled as well, this front panel, because these uh, vents also pop out as well once you remove the screws. In terms of maintenance, that's gonna be quite useful for cleaning these vents out. These are likely to get quite a bit of dust in them. So there's a fair bit going on with that front panel. From an engineering point, it's quite impressive, but it will be interesting to see how the baffle affects the airflow as well as the noise. So whether that will hinder airflow to these fans so you can see at the front here silverstone pre-installs two 140 mil fans these are made by coolcox they're just a black standard fan no rgb nine blades apparently during silverstone's testing they found that these were the best for airflow matched with this front panel mild steel side panels no tempered glass in this case two screws on the back are captive and then the panel slides out very easily and on here as well sound dampening material same on the other side. Inside the case is a pretty typical layout. So at the floor, there's a full cover power supply shroud with a few cutouts. No rubber grommets in those cutouts. 
But as you can see, cutouts at the top, they do have rubber grommets. And then behind these panels, there's a couple more cutouts. As I've mentioned earlier, at the front, there's two 140 mil fans. But in terms of cooling, if you want to change the cooling configuration, you can put up to 340 or 320 mil fans at the front. Same at the top as well, that will also accept 340 or 320 mil fans. And then for radiator support, the front supports up to a 360 mil, so that also means it will support 240s, 280s. 120 millimeter radiators and again it's same at the top so at the top you can fit up to a 360 millimeter radiator and then in the back of the case there's another one of the 140 mil fans pre-installed you could change that for a 120 mil fan if you like or potentially you could fit a 120 mil radiator in there If you do want to install a radiator in the front or if you want to change the fans you can just take out a few screws here and then the whole panel comes out so it's like a radiator bracket on there and then the top there's a single thumb screw again captive and then the top panel or the middle of the top panel slides out and you can see on here again there's some more sound dampening material but if you want to install fans on here you can actually just lift that out and you can see that's just a magnetic strip that holds that in and then this becomes a large vented section so fans radiators will be able to breathe up there and if you were to use this as an intake Silverstone provides this filter as well so that just clips in there and then you can slide this panel back on and then lock it in place. So that'll give you more ventilation through the top of the case and it also allows the user to choose between potentially better thermal performance with that vented top panel or better noise levels by using the soundproof in, in the top panel. The other side panel also held in position with two thumb screws that are captive. Again, that just slides out. And again, we've got more sound dampening material on there. In terms of hardware support, the motherboard tray will accept up to an E-ATX motherboard, and that includes dual socket EB boards, as well as obviously ATX, micro ATX, and mini ITX. In terms of graphics card length, maximum length with fans installed at the front is 394 millimeters. So that's enough space for the latest RTX 30 and Radeon 6000 series cards. And then maximum CPU cooler height is 182 millimeters. Another feature inside the case are these two brackets here. These are multi-purpose brackets, so you can use them either for a pump res combo. You can mount SSDs on here, so you can mount a 2.5 inch SSD on each one. So potentially two SSDs can be mounted on these. Or you could just use them as a cable cover. You can see they move from side to side, so longer motherboards, you might have to have them move towards the front of the case. But when you've got your power cables coming out, you can just pull them back this way, use them as a cable cover if you want. In the accessories pack, you also get a couple of these brackets, and these are designed for NVIDIA RTX 30 series Founders Edition cards. What they do is they attach to these plates, and then they'll screw into the back of the Founders Edition card and act as a GPU support. At the back of the case, it's a pretty typical layout. You've got a fan vent, a rear I.O. cutout for the motherboard I.O. Oddly, you've got a GPU vertical mount, which seems a bit pointless in a case that is designed like this with no tempered glass, no idea why you'd want to mount a graphics card vertically. There's also seven PCIe slots, and then at the bottom, in the typical space is the power supply cut out. And then round to the right hand side. So there's a few things going on here. There's a bit of space for cable management. It's not huge, probably only about 15 or 20 millimeters for cable management space. Again, in a workstation, professional PC, is cable management going to be really top of the priorities? Probably not, but there are plenty of cutouts, like I said, so that's good. And there's also plenty of eyelets for tying cables down, so that seems pretty decent. You've also got storage around this side as well, so as, as well as the two 2.5 inch SSD mounts around the other side, you also got two removable 2.5 inch brackets here as well. The screws aren't captive, so you have to kind of use two hands to remove these, but you can see they're easily removable. Screw your SSD to that and then 
they just mount back in place with a single thumb screw. In terms of 3.5 inch drive bays, you have a drive bay at the bottom here that is capable of accepting two 3.5 inch drives held in place with a single thumb screw that's not captive and then it just slides out. You can install your drives in there. There's anti-vibration rubbers on there. They just drive to install with screws and then you can slot it back in. There's actually two spaces for this so you can just slide it in at the front there if you want more space for power supply and cables or you can move it forward and slide it into the rearmost slot and that will give you a bit more space at the front for fans and radiators. It's a slight disappointment for me that you can only put two 3.5 inch drives in here. In a workstation PC you often need a lot of storage and 2.5 inch SSDs in large capacity are still very expensive. I would have liked to have seen maybe a couple more 3.5 inch drive bays. But if you don't need 3.5 inch drive bays, this can also be completely removed which gives you more space or more or less unlimited space for power supply and cable management. And when you remove that drive bay, you can see that there is some sound dampening material beneath where the 3.5 inch hard drive bay is. So Silverstone are even trying to limit noise coming from a mechanical hard drive. And then you can see finally on the bottom of the case, there's some feet that are just screwed on. These are about 20 mil. So it raises the case up, allows a bit of airflow underneath. And then right at the back, we've got a filter that slides out from the back for the power supply. And you can see there's a large power supply vent there. So because this is a case for workstation and professional PCs, originally for the build, I was thinking of using a Threadripper system, but Silverstone sent me this NJ700 fanless power supply. So I'm thinking we might have been pushing the limits of that power supply a bit with the Threadripper system. So I've dialed back the spec a little bit. So instead, we're using an AMD Ryzen 9 5900X, so 12 cores and 24 threads, still a good productivity and workstation CPU. Motherboard is this MSI Mag B550 Tomahawk. For graphics, it's an AMD Radeon RX 6900 XT. Memory is this G-Skill Trident Z RGB. This is a 32 gigabyte kit, so four times eight gigabyte modules. It's DDR4 3600 C16. Because this is just a test build and it's not going to be used as a workstation system, storage is just this one terabyte WD Black SN850. This is a PCI Gen 4 M.2 NVMe SSD. And then as I said, powering the system will be the Silverstone NJ700 fanless power supply. CPU cooler is the Silverstone Ice Gen 280, so 280 mil only one liquid cooler. I'll probably install this at the top to begin with, but I might test a few different scenarios with the cooling to see which one works best in terms of thermals versus noise levels. So let's get on with the build and see how it turns out.
Okay, so as you can see, I've got the test system installed inside the case. That's all up and running and working fine. As you can see, I have both the Cinebench R23 stress test running in a loop and the 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme stress test, both running in a loop constantly. In terms of the installation of the system, I've got no problems with the case at all. It was really easy to install a system in. Everything lined up perfectly fine. There's plenty of cable management cutouts all in the right places. Plenty of place to tie cables down. You can even quite easily plug in the EPS power connector at the top of the motherboard with the radiator and fans installed there. So there's plenty of space inside the case. In terms of the build quality, no problems with the case at all. It's more interesting when we start to look at the noise levels and the thermal performance of this case. And instead of running a load of tests and showing you the uh, graphs and charts on screen, which can sometimes be a bit boring, I'd rather try and show you what's happening with this case almost in real time. So as you can see, the test bench is set up. The noise meter is about well 300 millimeters away from the front of the case as I always have it with my noise testing and the case is sort of in its default configuration. Stock fans are at the front, AIO CPU cooler is at the top. The sound dampening material from the top panel has been removed so the AIO is exhausting warm air out. The fans are pushing the warm air out of the system. In terms of how I've got the fans set up, this is the important part I think of having a system that runs cool and quiet at the same time is it's more to do with having your fans set up correctly than anything else as far as I'm concerned so whenever the CPU is under 70 degrees C the fans are running at their minimum RPM so around 600 to 650 RPM with the fans on this AIO cooler but then once the CPU starts to increase temperature over 70 degrees the fans will steadily increase RPM and obviously as the RPM increases the noise level will increase at the moment so as you can see I'm running the Cinebench benchmark and the 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme all at the same time constantly in a loop and we've got about 41 decibels of noise so I'm just going to show you what's going on with these graphs here so at the top we have the CPU temperature, middle is GPU temperature and then the bottom is the CPU fan RPM and you can notice that about halfway along here we have a bit of a drop in temperature and then it raises back up to its current which is around about 78 degrees and the reason for that I'm going to show you now so if I just remove this front panel which is basically going to replicate a more open vented front panel noise level while the front panel was on as i said it was around about 40 decibels that has increased by one or two decibels now by removing that front panel but if you keep an eye on these graphs you'll see why having an open more vented front panel is beneficial in terms of thermal performance and in terms of noise levels you can see already cpu temperatures dropping by nearly four degrees we've dropped off the cpu temperature already and the front panel has been off for less than a minute and the fans which were around about a thousand rpm with the front panel installed are now dropped below our 800 rpm and you can see the longer you leave the front panel off that cpu temperature continues to drop we're down to just over 72 degrees now so already we've dropped from 78 to 72 so it's almost a six degrees drop in CPU temperature already and the fans they are still continuing to slow down because the RPM of the fans is dropping also the noise levels are dropping as well we're down to about 38 decibels now so that's a two decibel decrease from when we had the front panel installed so it shows that not always having a closed front panel it's not always better in terms of noise levels certainly isn't better in terms of thermal performance we're down to 71 degrees now if you look at this graph it actually dropped it just over 70 degrees at one point so 8 degrees c is a good drop in the temperature of cpu and if you look at the fans now the fans have even dropped below 700 rpm in fact those fans are almost back to their base speed so yes it shows that a solid front panel isn't always the best in terms of noise levels. I'll just pop this front panel back on and then you can see that 
this CPU temperature is going to start increasing again. So as you can see on this CPU temperature graph, we're back up to almost 75 degrees and that's just less than a couple of minutes after reinstalling that solid front panel. You can see quite clearly on the chart here as it's starting to increase again. And also if you look at the fan RPM, again, that's up to over 850 RPM. So you can see as we reinstalled this front panel, CPU temperature is gradually starting to increase and as well, so is the fan speed. In turn, that's going to increase noise levels again. So as far as I'm concerned, a solid front panel like this Yes, it's going to help with noise levels if you run your fans at a constant RPM, regardless of CPU temperature. But if you've got your fans configured correctly, maybe with some better quality fans as well, an open, more vented open front panel is a better solution in terms of thermal performance and noise. So in terms of build quality and how easy it is to install a system inside, it's not a bad case. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with it. As we've seen in our testing, a more open and vented front panel would have improved thermal performance and therefore improved noise levels. We often see this in thermal testing, the more open and the more airflow you can get through the case, the better it is obviously for thermal performance and also noise levels because fans don't need to ramp up enough, it's that simple. There's another problem with this case as well, the price for me is a bit on the high side. There's nothing really to justify that 190 pound MSRP that Silverstone quoted us with. There's no RGB, no expensive fans, no tempered glass. There isn't even a fan controller. So if you wanted to run a lot of fans in this case, you'd have to make sure that your motherboard is up to the job. So for me, I think the price that you can get it at from CCL at the moment at 150 pounds or even a bit less is more realistic for a case like this. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this review of the Silverstone Seta Q1. If you have, don't forget thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you want to check out the results of the additional testing that I ran on this case, make sure you head over to the website. And if you enjoy what we do here at KitGuru and you wanna help support us, you can always subscribe to our Patreon or even head over to our store and pick up some merch. And as always, if you want to catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to kickguru.net.